Yeah, I think now it's good to go. It's good to go. So, all right. Ready. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Bastian, and I'm going to talk about the current developments at Form and Salt now. Um, first, a short introduction. Yeah, about myself, since it's the first time at the at the Form and Con. So, um, I'm a master student at the Technical University in uh, Munich, in Germany, and since one year, I'm working at the um, at Ethics. And there, I've yeah, in the year or the beginning since the beginning of this year. I'm mainly working on um, form and salt, which we are going to talk about now. So, uh, first short um, outline what we're going to talk about, give a short introduction to salt and how salt is used in uh, form and then I'll give a short demonstration about the current features we have or what you can do as of now with form and salt. And then we will be talking about the current developments. So what's the work we did in the last um, couple of months at the plugin. So starting with an introduction to SALT. Um, SALT is a configuration management tool um, similar to Ansible and Puppet. So I'll just um, explain it with a short um, example. Let's imagine we have some, some hosts. And on a couple of episodes, we want to have some different services like host B and host C here. We have a web server running there and another host of a database. And um, how can SALT help us now getting this whole setup running? So in SALT terms, we would begin and define some environments, for example, a, um, a web environment for the web host and a database environment for the um, database hosts. And according to this, in order to get packages installed and configured on those um, or on those hosts, um, according to the environments, we need to define some so-called salt states, which may be comparable to um, puppet classes or endable roles. So here we have, for example, an Apache server um, configured or Apache state then for the uh, web environment. And for the um, database environment, um, PostgreSQL uh, instance, which then can be um, installed and configured with the states. And this configuration given, we would ship it um, to some master. So in order to, to get the whole system running, we need to define some sort master, which is the kind of single source of truth in this um, setup. And our host will, also, will all become so-called salt minions. And with this setup, we can use the configuration on, this, on the salt master, which then takes um, care of applying the so-called states to the um, corresponding salt minions. This um, setup kind of looks very similar maybe to the one you can use with Ansible, for example. Um, one kind of special thing with salt is since we have the salt um, service or daemon running, the, the minion running on all hosts, we can also have the um, other communication or the other way around. So the minion can also ask for um, updates on the state and look whether the state is currently applying is still the the um, the updated one or the latest one. And that being said, this kind of the the um, use case you can use salt for. And now we integrate it, or it is integrated in in Formin as well. But how can we use it then? So we've got a Formin running, and then we have kind of the same setup like before, but this time. The salt master is running not only on a specific or on some arbitrary host, but on a smart proxy, such that our foreman can interact with the whole salt environment through the smart proxy, and then um, yeah, make some uh, calls with the salt master, and from there on interact with the minions as well. Now we have the configuration again here, but this time it's in the foreman side, so foreman visualizes and um, yeah, is our our point where we interact and where we can configure the salt environments and the salt states and can say which um, which salt minion or which host shall have what um, environment and what state shall be applied to that host. Um, another benefit of, of forming um, with in combination with salt is that we scale our system up so we don't have only a single smart proxy, we got a couple of them and also corresponding salt masters is that we can now easily also have um, multiple environments set up here and distribute them through the whole system and apply states to different um, salt minions as well. This is kind of the theoretical background. I want to give a short um, demonstration of how we can use salt as of now. So I'm going to change to my form and instance here where I have a couple of hosts and one of them has a salt minion installed. But before um, I'm going to show this one, I want to show you the general kind of um, UI which we get with salt. So here in the configure, we have Puppet and Ansible already. And now there's also the salt um, 
menu which comes up. I'm just going to open soil environments in a new tab here. And we see that I, I have um, one environment, which is called base environment. And the base environment has two states declared um, in there and one host, um, which makes use of the environment and no host group as of now. Now, when I have a look at the states, which are in the base environment, there we have two now. One is called a pan file, another one is called vim. And you can uh, import these states um, from the corresponding salt master, which we have in this case. Uh, which is click here, or you can also create a new state. Um, in order to see the state, so what's the content of the state, I'm just going to switch to the um, machine which, there, which I'm connected to, to the salt master. So here we see we have the, the two states. I'm going to have a look at the append file because that's what we want to um, have a closer look to. Um, this is just a simple salt state where we first define the file we want to work on, which is here my file.txt. Then we call the salt module file.append on this um, on this file and give some parameter which is called text here and has two um, two strings we pass to the salt module. Um, yeah, what's what's supposed to happen from it is that the um, file.append makes um, or takes care of whether the strings we give here, so these two lines, are already um, part of the given file. If not, it adds them to the file. Um, but if they are already part, then it just stays like it is. And like the first thing here, we give like just some, some normal string, but the second one is kind of special one because here um, with this curly bracket to make use of a so-called um, variable here, which is a called append file text, um, which I'm going to show you now in the UI because this variable can be declared from the UI. Uh, if we go here to salt environments, we had already states we've also seen, and then we go to variables, and there we have the corresponding variable append file text, which we can then set some um, yeah set some value over here, which we're gonna leave like it um, now. Instead, we go back to our host, which has the salt minion and salt already. And before applying this data, before before running it, we gotta make sure that a couple of things are configured correctly. So I'm just going to go to edit and have a look whether the salt parameters are correct. So I scroll down here and we have the salt environment set to base, which is fine. We got the salt master configured here, which is also great. And then the next tab is salt states, the one we want to apply. And there we would have the two states available and the append file is already selected. So everything's fine here. And we can start um, running it so i would just go to a schedule remote job say run salt and a new um, job is then executed and we can have a look at the output which takes of course a couple of seconds so now um, we are communicating with the salt uh, master which is then applying the corresponding state to the host which we um, use here and there it is already so what does it say here it says the the name of the um, the state that we wanted to apply, a pan file, and then there's some comment, and here it says file uh, root my file txt is a correct state, which means there have been no changes to it right now because the content is already um, like the content we wanted to write in there is already in there, and um, due to the fact that I that I ran it before already, but now I want to see that there we can also make some changes by going back to the variable and changing the um, changing the content of the variable, submitting this one. And then we go back to our host or to the job. And I'm just going to rerun it. So it's going to apply the same state, but now with some um, different content. So then we're going to have another look here and see whether the changes um, were applied now, so now the, the, the variable changed, so now we should have um, a different content in the file in case it hasn't been there before, which we see here. So it just prints um, the current yeah, content of the file, and now we see, okay, that's the value of the, of the variable before, and now we changed it, and it has been applied successfully. So yeah, the state has been um, executed. So this is just a... Yeah, um, simple example how you can use it for sure. There are much more complex um, solid states, for example, when you want 
to install some software, configure it accordingly, like with the example of the Apache server and so on. But these are kind of the basic tools we have with Form and Salt in order to, um, to configure our hosts at this point. Now I just go back to the presentation and demonstration part is done. So now I want to continue with um, the current developments, which this uh, presentation is actually about. So I split it up in some features um, we've been working on in the past uh, couple of months and some maintenance work we did within the plugin. So first coming to the features. The first feature I want to introduce is the um, master configuration. What's, what is it about? So it's um, when you want to in, uh, install the, the plugin on some new foreman, we want to simplify the form salt installation procedure. Why should we want to simplify it? So we just have a look at the, um, at the installation at the menu. So when we go down here to the installation steps, um, you can just use the foreman installer to install the, um, the plugin on the foreman part and then also the smart proxy part here. And then you still got to perform a couple of steps for to get the plugin um, fully running and working. And thereby, one of the steps is the salt master configuration. So here we have a um, couple of lines we need to add to the ETC salt master such that the whole setup would work. And um, yeah, we want to automate these, this whole installation procedure such that it's more easy and more simple for this admin to, to install salt. So and and this, since this um, data we have here is already known during the installation procedure, we thought about um, moving this master configuration also in the part where we um, install the plugin via the form and installer. And therefore, we have a, um, an open PR right now, which is at puppet form and form and proxy. So the part of the form and installer, which takes place, uh, which takes care of um, installing parts um, at the at the from and proxy, and that way we have this PR which is going to add a template or a configuration template for the salt master, and a second step um, then install this configuration tablet as etc salt master d from conf, such then the whole installation procedure gets gets more easy at this point, or it's just less um, repetitive uh, steps to do. This is the first feature I wanted to show you. The second one is auto sign via grains. Um, this auto sign the grains procedure is important when we have a setup already. So we have our salt master and so on installed. And now we want to deploy a new host, which shall then act like a salt minion or as a salt minion and uh, communicate with our salt master, get some states and so on. But in order to uh, touch that, that this works, uh, the salt master has to authenticate the salt minion um, and at some, some point or some initial um, point. Therefore, we have a present um, the procedure, which which is done by now. It's just that the salt master has some autosign.conf file, which names the host names of salt minions he shall accept. And, um, and so when a salt minion is going to make a request to the salt master, salt master just looks in this file. OK, is the host name present in the file? If yes, I'm going to accept it. And the salt minion is going to be part of the infrastructure. Um, if not, it's going to reject it. This um, hostname procedure yeah, is not, um, uh, it is still supported, but not preferred by Salt anymore. So they want to have some new procedure which doesn't rely only on the hostname anymore. Instead, we, the preferred way now is to have like a shared secret between the Salt minion and the Salt master. So the Salt minion has some arbitrary um, string, which is going to send in the initial request. And the master as well has a file with these strings. Um, or this keys kind of thing. And if the, the the key that the minion sends to the master is part of this file, then it's going to accept it. So instead of just using the host name, we just introduce some other key, which is then um, going to be used. But in order to to deliver this key as an, um, after the deployment to the, to the host, we have to make some changes to the um, provisioning template, which is why we have another PR at Foreman currently open, open to Added the salt snippet, which takes care of installing the salt minion or configuring the salt minion, because now we also want to ship like this um, this key to the salt minion, such that when the host comes up, the salt minion is started, and the initial request is made, it can use this key and send it to the salt master for the authentication procedure. This is um, the second feature I wanted to show you, and the third one can be understood more of a maintenance. Um, 
feature, I would say. So we we had a look at the plugin and asked ourselves, yeah, what can be done actually via the UI? So like we've seen already, like um, changing changing variables, using environments, using states, and so on. And do we have the same functionality um, via API calls? This is for sure important because we want to use um, the Hammer plugin, for example, to automate um, procedure or procedures or steps when using form and salt. And there we've been going through the, through the plugin. And one thing which could not be done by now um, via the UI, but is going to be in the future or uh, in some, some days, hopefully, hopefully already, is to change the salt parameters we've just seen for a host, like salt master, salt environment, salt stage. You can also set them via the UI by now already for the host group but not via the API. So there we have another um, API, um, APR open right now, which then adds the functionality, adds another controller, such that we can also um, yeah, change these, these attributes um, via the API and not only via the UI. And then the other um, work I want to present is kind of the maintenance work we did with the plugin by now, or we want to do in the future. The first step is extend the test suite. So I would say the form and salt plugin has a pretty good test suite already. So we have a couple of functional and unit tests um, which are run when a new um, pull request is uh, opened up or some changes are made. Um, but some of them, for example, look like this, that we have just, I would say, kind of positive testing. So we, um, we test the functionality by just giving the correct parameters and check whether success is returned or the response has succeeded. Um, and here we want to add just some also false testing by, by giving wrong parameters and some other to, to just ensure a better quality of, of the whole test suite and also yeah have like some assert response that um, a failure can also happen in specific uh, cases where we actually want it to happen. So this is the first thing which we want to work on. The second thing are GitHub Actions, which we did already accomplish. So now, or as of now, you can or the form software plugin um, also supports GitHub Actions. So for example, for Rubicop and um, unit and functional tests, um, the GitHub Actions are used when a new PR comes up. And the third one is also related to Rubicop. So the Rubicop version hasn't been updated for a while in uh, form and salt. So that's what we did as well, just to bring it up to date and form and compliant. So we yeah, updated the Rubicop version and made the changes such that the code base is also uh, similar to, to form in itself. And yeah, as a short summary, the features I've talked about are the salt master configuration via the form and installer, which is work in progress now. The auto sign via salt grains, there we've also an open PR, and API consistency and also the hammer integration at this point. Then um, the second is the maintenance, increased test coverage or increase the test quality, I would say. Then the GitHub actions, which are done by now, and the Rubicop update, which is also done by now. And like a next topic, when we think about, uh, especially about maintenance, is the smart proxy salt plugin. So we don't have only the formal salt plugin, we also have a smart proxy component for sure. And there are, um, especially in terms of um, GitHub Actions or Rubicop itself, um, we are also gonna work on in the future. And that's it with my talk in case you have some questions, I will be happy to answer them. Otherwise, you can also reach out um, via my mail. Thank you, Basti. Has anyone any questions? I would have one. Uh, so thanks for, thanks for showing all of that. This is, uh, a very good overview. I have to say, I, I've seen the salt support a very long time ago. Um, but uh, I saw that if you were on the, the host detail page, there was a salt ENC button, which I think is similar to the YAML button we have for Puppet. But can you talk a bit more just about that? Uh, do you use something out of the Puppet ENC functionality we have today, or is that a completely standalone API and, and like totally different uh, representation of the node classification? Um, you, I think you mean when I'm at the host page and yeah, there's the uh, sort of ENC. 
Um, I can't say whether it's actually what, what Puppet uses as well, but that's just um, or this is ex this is the the um, node we use when we want to know about the relation whether of what hosts are using what salt stacks, for example, or what environments are given. Um, so instead of doing this, usually it's in done um, installed via so-called top files. And instead of using this, we use an external node classifier. So we just call this site here, um, which is then some some um, information. So we have here the the append file, and at some point there's some information about the host and so on. And for example, also the variable is given here, which we can see down here, for example. Um, yeah, and the environment as well. But uh, I can't say whether it's actually the same one which is also used in Puppet. Uh, and that, that could be looks really the same. Yeah, then that could be. <laughs> but I see the yeah, I, I see the the URL was different. It was under the salt namespace, so uh, probably it used the same internals, but uh, but it's a different endpoint. Yeah, yeah, that could be. Cool. Anyone else have any questions, comments? I have one. Um, so uh, it's slightly related to what Marek was uh, talking about. Uh, I have seen that uh, you have salt variables like in a separate bin. Uh, is there any plans or a uh, was it considered at all to reuse uh, uh, the host parameters that we already have in uh, Foreman Core? Um, I know that we make use of the parameters as well at some point. Um, but but uh, yeah, as of now, I'm not quite sure about the implementation of the parameters itself. But I could hand over to my supervisor. <laughs> just <can> play. <laughs> so. Um, you can use both. You can use sort variables, which um, are, well, I think the code is shared like in Ansible and in Puppet. And of course, you can also use the common host parameters, global parameters, host group parameters, whatever you want. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, Doc. And if is there any final questions? Um, if not, I suppose um, one other thing that I will say is that um, thanks to Maximilian and Atix, if anyone wants to get started with SALT in Foreman, we have some pretty good documentation uh, available for the main use cases. And if anyone is watching the, if anyone thinks of a question for Basti after we finish, or uh, if, some, if someone is watching back the recording, just feel free to write to us on our community discourse with any further questions. So thank you very much for your, your presentation, Basti. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome.